Hello YouTube, welcome to channel Anna Bella and today I'm going to be doing my Fantastic Beasts um, book collection review. I will be doing a film review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, but first I want to get this out of the way first. Okay. Okay, this is the sticker album. I got it free in my local co-op of all places and it is actually based on a newspaper. So, Magical Sticker Album, Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald, Fantastic Beasts, and Harry Potter. So, they're kind of like merging everything together and seeing how everything lay gets laid out. So, you've got Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Fantastic Beasts, the Crimes of Grindelwald, and Harry Potter. Okay, so you've got Fantastic Beasts. Look, I got six stickers free with the album. So, there we go. Grindelwald captured... Fantastic Beasts somewhere to find them. Little is strange. Credence is alive. So this is the crimes of Grindelwald. There he is. Newt and Jacob. I kind of like this. I really do. But it is going to disintegrate over time. Who is Credence? That is a good question. Because he's certainly not Corvus. Gellert Grindelwald. Okay, interesting. What does that say? Fur, daft, grookin, whooped, 1898. Oh, that needs translating. We'll get on that. So, oh, look. The beasts. And then we've got Harry Potter, so we've got Hermione there. This is like the Harry Potter section. So they've kind of the rise of Lord Voldemort. Oh, I thought he already rose. Mm. Deilluminated Godric's Hollow, Deathly Hallows, Magical Transport, Magical Objects, Horcruxes, Lord Voldemort, Death Eaters, Pure Blood Families. Hmm, interesting that. Oh, I'm liking that at the back. So there you go. Yep. And it was... Where is it? It should say somewhere. Oh, yeah. It was free. Well, the album was anyway. The stickers won't be, of course. But that's kind of cool. Okay. I've also got this, which is the cinematic yearbook. It's got stuff to do inside. But it, again, is split into sections. So you've got Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Crimes of Grindelwald, and then um, bits and bobs at the back. So it's quite good. And things pull out. And so forth. It's quite nice. I have to say the artwork has improved. Nagini. And the world escapes. There's that skull again. Crimes of Grindelwald. And then... Fantastic Beats. So it's quite cool. And it's quite a fun book, actually, that. Here it is. This, I know, I know, I said I would not be getting original screenplays, but... I will explain why in my film review on the sofa in a minute. So here's the book. It's hardback. If we take the cover off, I know, shocking. It is black. And it has the Eiffel Tower on the front. Because obviously in the first film we were in New York and in the second film we spend most of our time 
in France. Or Paris, which is Paris. Okay, so I went to see a movie um, and I had to buy the screenplay to actually understand who some of the characters were and what the hell was going on. I know, and I've read all seven Harry Potter books and all eight Harry Potter films, plus Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them film, and I absolutely found The Crimes of Grindelwald a tad indecipherable, to be absolutely and perfectly honest. And then I have read this now, which has made it all clear because there are some extra scenes in here that aren't actually in the movie. It is wonderfully illustrated, I do have to say, which make up for the lack of description because it is a screenplay, so you don't get that. Oh, look, there's the deluminator at the end, look. look. I definitely saw the deluminator. So now I'm going to spend ages... There it is, there's the deluminator. So... That is that. Look, the new Wizarding World logo. Zoom in on that for you. See, they have such cute little details. Look, two cats and the Deathly Hallow symbol there. It does have such, such details, which are stunning. I will say that for it. Okay, I'm now going to go and do the film review. Come with me to the sofa and we will review. YouTube, welcome to the channel, Anna Bella, and I'm actually getting round to doing my review of the crimes of Grindelwald. This is the poster that I got when I went to see it. It is um, Newt with the Kelpie um, in its tank, getting some medical treatment. I went to see the film. Oh my goodness, it was slow. It was really slow and really badly edited. I want that minuted. It was awfully edited. Admittedly, it makes Suicide Squad's editing of 2016 look good. And Suicide Squad had a pace. This film, which is supposed to be a young adult slash children's film, was grindingly slow, full of very boring adult characters that were wearing grey suits that you didn't know their names of, apart from Newt's brother. Everybody else in a grey suit from the Ministry of Magic was really boring. And you just wanted to sort of like, oh, yeah, I'm watching something that's based off Harry Potter-ish with spoilers will be in this review. Look, it's December. I waited long enough. Yeah, we had child accidental murder. Yay! You know it's J.K. Rowling when she includes things like child accidental murder. Such a happy topic. Note the sarcasm. And who or what is Credence? I'm not even going to go and explain the whole how Credence could be Dumbledore's sister's son with Gellert Grindelwald theory that I have. Take that as my five pence of the whole situation, people. But people were like, but isn't Grindelwald supposed to be in love with Dumbledore? And I'm like, no, Dumbledore is in love with Grindelwald because he is gay. Grindelwald we don't actually know. I believe that Gellert Grindelwald is actually a sociopath. Because if you notice in that movie, he did not actually kill anybody until the blue fire at the end of the film at his rally. He got other people to do his work for him because he was very persuasive and had a silver tongue. Even though he even persuaded his third guard to get his tongue cut out rather than Gellert Grindelwald having his tongue cut out. Because, I mean, if Gellert Grindelwald's tongue cut out, the whole story would be over because he wouldn't be able to do what he does. He's clearly, he can't read minds, but he's very charmistic, very charming, got charisma, and he's clearly got very astute social and emotional intelligence and can read people's body languages very quickly and he can sense whether people are witches or wizards because notice when he went into the room with the small child who everybody assumed was a muggle he looked at it for some time as if he was assessing whether it was magical or not and then he left the room and we all know what happens then yes child murder 
but this time done by an adult. So, yes, over and above, what a jolly topic it was. I will continue this in my room. Hello YouTube, it's channel Annette Bella and we have rejoined from my bedroom. Okay, so here I am with my Crimes of Grindelwald book. I was just saying how Gellert Grindelwald is a sociopath, I've covered that. But I also want to bring up another point. I had to buy a screenplay just to figure out who all the names were of the, these random men in grey suits. It was like, oh look, another man in a grey suit. Oh, another one. Another one. How boring. Yay! Yes, so very useful. So I had to get that just to get that and also to follow what was actually happening in some of the plot because they spent so long. I know I appreciate her love of mystery as much as the next Potter Nut, but this is taking it to ridiculousness. Surely some of this could have been condensed and there also was enough set up because there was no reason, no explanation. We didn't have any sort of like, hello, Credence, I'm Lakini, Credence, my name is Credence. Oh, how long have you been here? Oh, all of this. We had none of the friendship. Suddenly they were, suddenly were at the circus and then suddenly they decided that they were going to escape and run away. But we had no indication why. And why would Nagini do that? I don't understand, unless she was really compassionate. Which seems to be her nature, even though she has been so abused. And it also explains why she ate the muggle teacher in the seventh book, when she was in her snake form. Anyway, I mean the muggle studies teacher in the seventh book. Um, but that's by the by. Um, that's much later. But you had no understanding of why they developed their friendship, what connected them. It was just sort of like, oh, here's Credence. He's an, he's an underbeing, just like you. He'll be fine. And we're off we go to the next bit. And then we had that business about that elf nurse who was killed by a British dude who was trying to kill Credence, who was actually a follower of Gellert Grindelwald. Are you following this? Yeah. I appreciate, like, and then we had the whole business of, like, Newt getting back with Tina and then the whole, um, Queenie doing a whole Marope Gaunt, um, effect of the love potion on him and losing her marbles completely. Yes, and I fully understand why she would choose Gellert Grendelwald because Gellert Grendelwald is actually saying that wizards, as the wizarding species, are actually oppressed by their own laws and they don't have freedoms that perhaps other muggle citizens like the can't spells and the nomadges have which i can perfectly understand but obviously his methods are a tad interesting shall we say but there is a case to say that at this point in time witches and wizards are quite oppressed by their ministries of magic for various reasons but it was very interesting that Queenie wanted to, them to get married in England and live in England. But his bakery is in America. So how on earth can that ever work? So yes, it was an interesting hodgepodge of ideas. It was nice to see Little Lestrange reveal about her brother Corvus and the switching of the babies. You know, Credence for Corvus and Corvus for Credence. I thought that was very well done. Um, the whole business of... The Phoenix and Credence being a really a stumbled or question mark who we've never heard of is just lazy. Normally we do know. Admittedly, Dumbledore did say something about like, um, like his grandfather having a Phoenix or his great grandfather having a Phoenix and that it disappeared. And whenever a Dumbledore was in trouble, a Phoenix will come. But whether Credence is a Dumbledore, because I mean, all we have is Gellert Grindelwald say so. And the big fact is, is Dumbledore may have been in love with Gellert, but Gellert could very well have been in love with Ariana Dumbledore. And perhaps she went to her younger brother rather than Albus to explain this. And then her younger brother took her to her older brother who was in conversation with Gellert and all hell break loose. And she stood in the middle of the three boys and unfortunately was deceased and then left a baby that was Credence? Who knows? Who knows what's going on? But that's my hunch and I'm sticking with it. That's my theory. Whether the internet likes it, who knows? 
But there is something about Dumbledore's mother being of Native American extraction, which would possibly make Dumbledore's family a branch of the American Salazar Slytherin line from Ireland. That would be interesting in itself, because I definitely think there's a connection there. Um, the whole Letter Lestrange thing, that was really well done. I felt that she was given a good send-off. Um, but it did seem somewhat of a waste of a very good character for reasons that we may not have fully appreciated or understood. And I think we will probably understand them more in the third film. Because what, we've got five of these and we're, we've just had number two. So in another two years we get three, then another two years we get four, and then another two years we get five. We hope. Unless she decides she's going to make six. We could be here a while with this. Oh boy. I definitely think that we will be getting a um, cameo of either the young Hagrid or the young Tom Riddle at some point in these films. I really do. Considering that we did have, we did see the young Minerva, who actually I don't think would be teaching with Albus Dumbledore. Because if Albus Dumbledore is like in his early 30s or... Um, I'm not quite sure, because wasn't Dumbledore supposed to be like 160? And Minerva was only 70? Yeah, interesting. But maths was never was J.K. Rowling's strong suit. Um, so, yes, it's very interesting. Um, I felt that it was too slow-paced. And that the editing was terrible, because sometimes you were with them, and then sometimes you were with somebody else, and it was just choppy. Choppy, but it wasn't like quick and it didn't lead nicely from one thing to another and I felt that some scenes were missing and yes even though I have read the screenplay which is filled in some of the gaps with some of the scenes it's actually I got the feeling that they actually filmed other scenes particularly between Credence and Nagini because I felt that that was probably a little bit necessary anyway out of five I'm going to give this a three mm -mm. Johnny Depp did play Gellert Grindelwald very well um, and I feel that I have a better understanding of who he is and how he operates. And actually it's kind of creepy because I actually would prefer Voldemort because at least with him it's like you join me or you die. With Geller, it's like you can join me but you don't have to join me. I may or may not kill you. I'm not quite sure. You know? Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. The Crimes of Grindelwald, which is the second film in a saga that may or may not end up being six movies, but apparently we've got confirmed that it is five. So, yeah. Please like, comment and subscribe. And let me know what you thought about The Crimes of Grindelwald in the comments below. <laughs>